You're watching Maine Biz Sunday, Maine's business news source. We're back with our panel of experts who are discussing commercial real estate and its connections to Maine's overall economic health. Uh, one of the things we were just talking about during the break, and I wanted to con uh, continue that conversation, was, let's, let, first of all, I think maybe there's a misconception about the vacancy rate that's out there and thinking that there are these great bargains that are out there and there's a lot of empty space. Uh, tell me about that. that. We were talking about the Portland vacancy rate. Tell us about that well, the, first, the, and then we'll the, talk about Bangor. The office vacancy rate is about 10.4% right now, and that includes direct availability, which is directly from a landlord, and, and sublease space. So, the, you know, the 10-year average for vacancy in Portland is about 6%. So we're, we're you know, pretty significantly higher than our 10-year averages are, but in relation to the nation, which is about 17%, give yeah. or take, or Greater Boston, which is 13 or 14, we're significantly better. Okay, so that's good for landlords. People are yeah. still in there. It's, oh, it's good for landlords, but we're still relative to our historical data. Right. We've got a relatively high vacancy. Yeah. Okay, and, and Bangor. Bangor, actually, we're at a 6.2% vacancy rate in the office market. That's up only 0.2% over the last two years, so relatively unchanged. The thing that we're seeing, though, are that, that uh, tenants and landlords are doing those deals. Um, okay. People are still moving around. They're looking for better deals. I wouldn't necessarily say that landlords are in a better spot than they were ten years or two years ago, um, even though they have the same vacancy. What kinds of deals, what, what kinds of incentives and offerings are landlords making to bring people in and move, move them around? You get free rent. You get. Uh, and where's you that at? <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, yeah. But I mean, for how long? You get, um, are they offering a couple months free rent? It, it all depends on yeah. all, all the lease terms. But there, there's a variety of lease terms that could be included. It's, it's very deal specific. Yeah. A lot yes. of times, it's very location driven. We, we just, I just did a deal. Someone had six months of free rent. The landlord gave a significant amount of tenant improvement dollars, and they ended up having uh, the rent was two or three dollars below what their asking rent was. Okay. This was on a five-year term, yeah. so that's a significant concession. Uh, yeah. Well, given that, then Tom, uh, with your uh, commercial customers at the bank, um, uh, are you recommending that if I come in there and as I've been leasing, I've got my small business or a store, and, and I come and I talk to you, gee, is this the time for me to buy? What would you recommend? Um, well, most of my customers would answer that question better than I could yeah. advise them, for okay. one. But, okay. um, well, if I'm asking you for but the But if you're asking me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to buy, would you well, say? Well, it depends. Everything, as Jim says, everything is on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. And um, I think that uh, you know, different buyers have different objectives mm -hmm. in mind. Um, they might specialize in certain properties or need a certain cash and cash return. Um, some of them may have you know, silent partners who need a certain return that would mm -hmm. would, would drive uh, what type of transaction would okay. happen. Yeah. So, uh, I, you, generally, I, I think a banker would tell you they try to accommodate those needs as, as best they can. Uh, are you uh, are you surprised by the um, that the vacancy rate isn't higher given the the way the economy is now? No, I'm not. And and what does that mean in terms of you think of our economy? Well, I, it, I'm not surprised at all because, uh, as Bev has pointed out, we're not a high growth state. Yeah. Um, one of the th things we avoided this time there was not a lot of spec construction, mm -hmm. so we don't have this We're overlay that, of, right? of inventory, and uh, so as a result, uh, you know, construction stopped <laughs> a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's it, it, the situation is uh, the word I try to th think was languid. There's not there's sort of this uh, equilibrium going on of, yeah. of no it, new development, no no growth, and it's is there a psychology? Is there a psychology? <clears throat> I mean, we have, we're, we're a state of mostly small towns, and everybody knows they're downtown, they're small downtown, and when, if there are two or three empty storefronts, everybody kind of panics. I wonder if that, and they're seeing that, gee, is this a sign of the larger kind of thing? Every, all the everything's leaving our town, but what I'm hearing is maybe that's not the case. It's the kind of the normal cycle. It's a bit higher right now, but still not like the rest of the country, perhaps. Uh, okay, let me ask a question about uh, construction. Uh, how are you guys keeping body and soul together these days? I mean, is there any con commercial construction going on? <laughs> it's it's a tough market. Yeah, uh, it's a tough market, and we we've been talking about uh, where are we with the lease market, where are we with the repurchase market. Okay. Let me address the construction Good. market. It's um, it's a it is definitely a buyer's market. We're repricing buildings, commercial buildings now, and renovations that uh, we had priced two years ago when people were a little unsure. We're seeing the prices down anywhere from zero to fifteen percent. Now, what's driving that? <clears throat> Uh, what's driving that we're, is is a combination of factors. The first thing is is, is interest rates are low. The mm -hmm. second thing is construction costs are low, and that's driven by both labor and material costs. Uh, unemployment in construction in the state of Maine exceeds 20% right now. 
And, and I would say that real wages in, in the construction industry in the state of Maine and certainly in northern New England is actually down about 5 or 6% in the last two years. Materials were, were uh, skyrocketing back in 04 and 05. Mm -hmm. We were getting quotes and materials that were only good for 48 hours. People would wait for a builder to show up. Now when you go to a pre-bid meeting, there's 15 people standing mm -hmm. there. So if it, it's one trying to outdeal the other one, exactly, and Driving people are taking down. taking work at and, and we had a bid this morning, and and we think that the low bidder took it at cost. That's what we're wow. seeing in this market. All so right. it, the conditions are right, Alan. And, and speaking of that, I, and this is interesting. I want to. It sounds like we're kind of at this uh, uh, this kind of point in our economy here, especially in Maine, where. Uh, the recession is bottoming out. Smart businesses are looking to where can I position myself on the curve as it goes up to get in at the right time. Uh, however, there's not this huge glut of space that's out there, so maybe I need to build. So, are smart people going to start jumping in now, trying to take advantage of that and those lower prices and their interest rates? And is that a signal? Or what, what kind of signals should we look for? Well, well, you need uh, demand to jump in, so. and that's the problem. So, there's still has, in terms of. Not ready to invest because I'm not sure that the economy is going to be. Or that you have a tenant, or yeah. that you want okay. to grow your business. Okay. Um, the uh, I, I talked to uh, Chris Pinkham, who, who you may know, yep. the main as, as Association of Community Banks, yesterday, uh, and just to get the, the, the entire bank, Good. state banks, perspective. And one of his big issues is that the um, his member banks are have lots of liquidity, but no one looking for loans, mm -hmm. uh, which is. At, at great odds with the media, national media is is portraying. It's, it's okay, is that right? You guys are out there. Yeah, I mean he he is right. There, there the uh, Tom had mentioned earlier the the big issue on the buy side is you got to get the buyer and the seller to agree on a price, mm -hmm. and that's the issue right now. Mm -hmm. e even I mean if if someone I is selling right now, there's they're probably selling because they really have to sell at this point in time, I mean, for the most part. I mean, there are certain deals that are external situations. People have, partnerships have broken up, divorces, right. whatever, that right. are forcing situations. Otherwise, they're sitting where, on it. Yeah, people are going to sell. And, but, but other than that, they'll sit and wait if they have to, or if they want to take advantage of, they've got a situation with tenancies that are in for a long period of time, and they can take advantage of really low interest rates, maybe this is a good time for them to sell. So... Others want to weigh in on that and kind of where we're going with that? Because I get the sense that it's kind of, everyone's kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. Well, I think you have to look at, at what's the best deal for you. Yeah. And, uh, and I think you have to ask, if you're a business and you think you want to make that jump, you, you have to look at all options that are on the table. And is mm -hmm. it better to build or, or is it better to, to find a property that mm -hmm. you can afford? There are deals out there. Mm -hmm. There are deals out there, but there aren't a lot of properties. We're still seeing, even though we have, you know, a a decent vacancy rate in industrial. We're still seeing build suits happening in industrial. We're yeah. still seeing yeah. office buildings yeah. go up, and that's because the right property in the right location isn't available. Yeah. And so you're you're always going to see that even in a down economy. Interesting, interesting. Okay, we're going to wrap right there, but I'm going to keep you around because we're going to do an afterthought segment, talk more about all of this, and especially get some more of your more detailed predictions for. Uh, 2010, maybe some good stories about what's happening in, in your specific areas uh, in our four afterthought segments that we'll see on the web. So stick around. We'll be right back. You can catch more of this discussion on commercial real estate with our panel of experts in our exclusive afterthought segment seen only on the web. Go to mainbiz.biz and click on the Main Biz Sunday link. We'll be right back. Main Biz Sunday is made possible in part by funding provided by the Finance Authority of Maine. <laughs>